Don't live by fables. Trust in the living God. Trust of God in the earth today. Holy Ghost, your God in the earth today. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today. And you walk with him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstraud. Thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. One of my favorite verses. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust say trust. trust trust in uncertain riches but trust that's implied there trust in the living God say trust in, trust in. The, living God, the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy who gives us richly all things to enjoy Holy the living God mm -hmm. say the living God According to this verse of scripture if it's true which I'm of the opinion that it is so if I can learn to trust or have faith in or belief that's another word another two words for trust faith belief in the living God say in the living God, the living God. he will give me richly all things to enjoy is this good news yes. you say that in some churches and they think you're preaching the bad news well I'm not a novice I've been preaching and in the ministry in one form or another since 1987 say 1987. 1987 you can figure out the years there but I've been in the ministry in one form or another since 1987 and over the years that's a few years right over the years I've refined this message that I bring to you you know what refining means right mm -hmm. you boil it down to what's the most important parts the most valuable parts the most impactful parts and by impacting I mean impacting your life it will have the most impact on your life that you may know your place that you may know the dispensation that you are in mm -hmm. and most people have no idea <laughs> and that you may know who you are in that dispensation with mm -hmm. wouldn't that be good to know yes. and you've heard me say you even heard me say it today the Holy Ghost he's God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words mm -hmm. that didn't just happen I didn't just come up with that phrase one day it was years and years and years of distilling down who you are say who I am, who I am. and where you are say where I am, where I am. and who you're walking with mm -hmm. and how you do it so when I say the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words it took a long time to get there does that make sense yeah but receiving that seemingly simple message requires many times a complete change of your thinking and I worship you Holy Ghost is one of the mechanisms one of the tools you can use to get there quickly mm -hmm. I hope you heard that using the words I worship you Holy Ghost can help you get here quickly and the result will be you fully engaged in this dispensation mm -hmm. now a close second in impactfulness in your life will be the message of prosperity that comes along with this but I'll get into that towards the end of this message are you here mm -hmm. yep. John chapter 4 verse 24 God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so we can see that this spirit God say the spirit God, spirit God. 
is a him he's a person right yep. God is a spirit they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth said another way you could say they that worship in spirit and truth right because mm -hmm. he said they will worship in spirit and truth yep. so they that worship in spirit and truth will worship him did you hear that yes. say they, they that, worship that worship in spirit and truth, spirit and truth will, worship will worship him him who holy ghost. the Holy Ghost who is a spirit the Spirit God Amen. those who worship in spirit and truth will worship the Spirit God and we know he's the Holy Ghost isn't that funny they that worship in spirit and truth he is the spirit of truth he is a him he's the spirit of truth he's the Holy Ghost you worship him you know how many people don't like that quite a few well anyway we can see here God is a spirit say God, God is, a spirit. is a spirit and we know he's the spirit God and we know he has a name the Holy Ghost right mm -hmm. now let's look here at Luke 24 verse 36 this is the resurrected Jesus after he was raised from the dead he'd not yet gone up into heaven he was still on the earth right but raised from the dead mm -hmm. resurrected and as they thus spake Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them peace be unto you verse 37 but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit verse 38 and he said unto them why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts verse 39 behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have we've already seen according to scripture that God is a spirit mm -hmm. here Jesus was raised from the dead in his physical form and said I am NOT a spirit mm -hmm. you know people think I'm preaching heresy I'm literally preaching straight up scriptures I didn't say it mm -hmm. Jesus said it second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3 for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine say sound doctrine sound that's mean stable doctrine that's stable within the scriptures mm -hmm. they want to go outside of it but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears mm -hmm. and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables so you have these people that can't endure sound doctrine but prefer say prefer, prefer. a fable mm -hmm. they would rather have a fable than sound doctrine the sound doctrine is that Jesus was raised from the dead and then was raised from the earth and then went into heaven and sat down on the right hand of the Father sound doctrine is that Jesus left you he went away and what did he say would happen when he went away he would send not himself in a different form as a spirit no he said I will send another and the another the another will be with you forever he didn't say I'll send another and I will be with you forever he said I'll send another and he mm -hmm. say he. he he will be with you forever so Jesus left you and shall return shall return indicates that he's not here how can he return if he's here I say you know Gary I'm gonna go to the store and then I'll return but I never leave how can I return if I never leave I would have to leave and then return this is so plain but people would prefer a fable and if they prefer the fable they can't have the truth and walk in the truth mm -hmm. or worship him the spirit of truth mm -hmm. 
they prefer something that's not sound doctrine they would rather have Jesus in their heart than the Living God mm -hmm. does that hurt yet <laughs> first Timothy chapter 4 verse 10 for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the Living God we trust in the Living God who is the Savior of all men especially those that believe who's the Savior of all men the Living God if you got saved it was by an operation of the Holy Ghost the Living God there's only one God in the earth today if you're in the earth and you got saved it was by an operation of the Living God whereby you got saved I'm not saying Jesus didn't pay for the price of your salvation of course he did I'm saying that if you got saved it was by the Holy Ghost doing something to you we trust in the Living God who is the Savior of all men here's the hard truth Jesus had nothing to do with it Jesus is sat down at the right hand of the Father if you got saved it was by an operation of the Holy Ghost and Jesus had nothing to do with it stop getting mad at me we need to be fully present in the dispensation that we're in if we're gonna have full effectualness Jesus saved me no Jesus did not save you Jesus paid the price for your salvation the Holy Ghost 1st Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 3 wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost or by an operation of the Holy Ghost so the Living God is the Savior you must worship and serve the Living God in this dispensation now would it be okay to worship and serve the Living God mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. you think you'd be all right you'd, you'd be you'd be in on good solid ground you would have sound doctrine if you worshiped and served the Living God yes seems pretty obvious to me right especially when you phrase it that way mm -hmm. of course it'd be okay you should mm -hmm. would it be okay to worship and serve the Living God and in doing so wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus so that's that's where I'm at I'm worshiping I'm serving the Living God and then I'm waiting and hastening really the day of the coming of the Lord Jesus would that be okay yes. sounds scriptural to me mm -hmm. which would mean I'd have to be with the Living God worshiping and serving him and waiting for Jesus who is not here but coming first yes. Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 9 and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God yeah. say the living, the living and true God. true God so you turn from idols to serve the living and true God yeah. and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come so we're serving that's our present reality we're worshiping and serving the true and living God and we are waiting for Jesus to return from heaven mm -hmm. are you here yeah. this my friend is being fully engaged in this dispensation anything else you're trying to be in some other dispensation it's not gonna work very well mm -hmm. worshiping and serving the living God and waiting hastening the return of Jesus are we up to speed mm -hmm. so specifically who is the living God that we are worshiping and serving you said it was okay for me to worship and serve mm -hmm. the true and living God so specifically and scripturally who is 
the living God. 1 Corinthians. Is this okay so far? Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 know you not that you are the temple of God say the temple of God, temple of God. and that the Spirit of God dwells in you or literally the Spirit of God dwells in you Amen. you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost right he said you know you not your body's the temple of the Spirit God that dwells in you what know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost so we can conclude yes. we can conclude that the Spirit God is the Holy Ghost by these two verses of Scripture second Corinthians chapter 6 now you understand that second Corinthians came after first Corinthians. first Corinthians very good come to the front so this is a follow-up letter that Paul is writing to the Corinthians he first said what twice to them saying hey your your body's the temple of the Spirit God he dwells in you and your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is the Spirit God is he expecting them to already know the things he wrote to them in 1 Corinthians? Yes. Yeah. Now he's going to add to it, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God? Who would that be now? Me. You. The temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the living, the living God. Does your Bible say that? we know that you are what know you not that the Spirit of God dwells in you the Spirit of God you're the temple of the Spirit God who is the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. then he says you're the temple of the Living God describing who this Spirit God is he's the Spirit God he's a he's the Holy Ghost he is the Living God we can conclude by this verse of scripture that the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. is the living God Amen. say the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Is, is the living God. living God pretty clear right so have we established who the living God is the Holy Ghost is the living God he's the only God in the earth today he's the only living God in the earth today mm -hmm. The Bible calls him specifically the Living God. Now, Philippians, Philippians 4:19. A lot of people could quote this, mm -hmm. and that is good. But this should what I've been speaking on this evening should shine some new light. Say new light, new light. on this verse of scripture. Paul says here remember he's the one who wrote to the Corinthians mm -hmm. but my God shall supply yes. who's the God he's talking about the living God my God the living God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus my God shall supply all your need say all. all what does all mean all. all means all that means all of it not just financial but we will talk about that but it means all your needs who will the living God Amen. who is the living God Holy the Holy Ghost is the living God you're getting it and therefore Philippians 4 19 again says my God shall supply all what God your God say my God. my God who is that the Holy, the Holy Ghost is the Living God your God the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. say my God, my God. The, Holy Ghost. the Holy Ghost he supplies all my need according to it does this matter mm -hmm. yes. yeah. that's why I say this is the second most impactful thing you have to have the, the first is knowing that he's God and worshiping him mm -hmm. as the Living God 
they that worship in spirit and truth worship him mm -hmm. number one number two is knowing that he's the one that supplies all your needs I'm not even gonna get into it the third would be how he does it by speaking in agreement mm -hmm. but let's stick to this one so the Living God is the one who's gonna supply all your needs mm -hmm. are some of your needs financial I would say a very large percentage of the prayers God hears or doesn't hear are about financial matters money mm -hmm. and this is actually this verse of scripture in Philippians was, was literally talking about that kind of need mm -hmm. a financial need so we can conclude <laughs> we can conclude that the Living God the Holy Ghost will supply your financial needs isn't that good that he's in the earth where do you suppose your financial need is in the earth, in the earth. this is good news mm -hmm. first Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 again <laughs> we started off here charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but trust in mm -hmm. the Living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy who does this the Holy Ghost the Living God so you trust in you believe in the Living God who gives you richly all things say I believe in, I believe in the Living God, living God. Who, gives me who gives me richly, richly. All, things. all things is this a belief you must have this working in your life but in order for that to work in order for you to have it working you must worship and serve a living God say I worship, I worship and, serve and serve a living God, a living God. and it works for me mm -hmm. you see where we've missed it we haven't been worshiping and serving a living God we've been all wrapped up in fables Luke chapter 4 verse 8 Jesus answered and said it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only serve Jesus said you're supposed to worship the Lord your God and him only serve who is the Lord your God the Holy Ghost he's the Spirit God John 4 24 says God's a spirit you should worship him he says thou shalt worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve that's the Spirit God that's the Living God that's the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. he's the Living God who gives you richly all things to enjoy don't live by fables know your place you're a temple of the Holy Ghost you're a temple of the Living God what does a temple do worships the God of the temple know the dispensation that you are in worship him serve him he is the Living God and all things are yours Holy Ghost I worship you and I thank you that you are the Living God in the earth today and I can walk with you and fulfill all of your scriptures and have you supply all of my needs and richly provide me with all things for my enjoyment what a great privilege and honor it is to worship you and serve you in Jesus name amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost you are the living God, God. you richly Eventually. provide me provide with all things for my enjoyment I increase more and more right now in Jesus name amen the 